Okay, doing another one. This one is about this concept that we are all one. A lot of people like to say, oh, you know, it's kind of a new agey thing, but uh, you hear a lot of people say it, oh, we're all one, we're all made of the same. I just saw a George Carlin, uh, short George Carlin excerpt. They asked him about uh, not... Uh, not comedic, but they were just asking him about life and existence. He said, oh, well, everyone's trying to get back to the source. You know, we're all made of the same stuff. We're created in supernova. And that is true. We are all made of the same stuff. Yes, the elements that uh, compromise our uh, matter were created in, if you don't know this already, stars, supernovas, things like that. It's pretty amazing. But to say that we're all one, to say that we are, you know, that there's an allusion to um, the separation between you and me, or me and uh, any inanimate object in the world, to me is false. I'm sorry, but we may all be made of the same material, but to say, to, to conflate that with the idea that we're all one... Uh, it's not the same thing. My experience is not your experience. We may be made of the same material, but we are sort of uh, capsules of organization, is the way I, I sort of think of it. We're a certain organization of um, various things, you know. That's We're at a certain place in time, um... We are, uh, have a certain genetic code, dictates certain things about uh, how we behave and uh, how we perceive the world. Um, you know, the people around us affect us in a way, where we're born, you know, who we spend time with. But the point is, I am not you, because you don't know what my experiences are, and I don't know what your experiences are. You know... To say we're all one assumes that you and I have had the same experiences. You know, that we're basically the same person, but that's not true. You know, maybe I know how to play the piano and you don't. Or you know how to do uh, particle physics and I don't, you know. But, I mean, this is all pretty obvious stuff. But, you know, it's like for, for people to say we're all one, you know. I'm sorry, but there is, you know, and people say that uh, that the differences between us are an illusion. I'm sorry, but this this is not an illusion. I know things you don't know. You know things I don't know. You've experienced things that I haven't experienced. I've experienced things that you haven't experienced. You know, what it, it's 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 precisely those differences that make experience worth having, as far as I'm concerned. And that's where it really gets ridiculous, is this idea that we're trying to get back to that. Oh, we all want to go back. Well, in life, there is some amount of longing for something. There's sort of a, uh, you know, the Buddhist, you know, or the Buddha uh, sort of characterized it as some kind of, uh, um, they, call it, they call it suffering through the translation, but it's basically a feeling that something is lacking. Now, a lot of people like to say, well, what's lacking is, you know, return to the source or whatever. Well, I'm sorry, but if if what we really wanted was to return to a state of oneness, then why do we bother existing at all in the first place, you know? If there's no difference between me and this fireplace over here or this computer I'm talking into, then, you know, what kind of experience would we be having? No kind of experience whatsoever. There would be no experience. There can't be an experience when there's no difference between you and me, when there's no difference between me and inanimate objects. So it seems confusing to me, this idea that, oh, well, we want to get back to this point where there's no experience where, you know, where nothing really ever happens. Because if, if, if we're all, you know, one thing and uh, nothing ever happens, there's no way for us to interact with some other thing. Other thing, I started to... If there's no way for us to act, with, interact with some other thing, then, then there's no experience to be had. And maybe that was the case in the beginning. Maybe in the beginning, there was no experience to be had, and that's why we have experience now. Maybe, you know, 
Maybe we, as that one thing, made a conscious decision that we were going to splinter into many multiple organizations of things, and that was how we were going to have an experience. So, I don't know. All I'm saying is that, you know, this we're all one, you know, we're all going back, we all want to get back to the source. This is ridiculous. I don't want to get back to the source. I don't want to be one with you. I want to be me. And I think, to me, you know, what makes life isn't, worth living isn't so much the, you know, connection I have with everything. You know, I mean, it's nice to have connections with everything, but more importantly to me, what makes life worth living is this sort of push and pull between, you know, wanting things and getting things. You know, for me, it's mostly just when you want something and then you eventually get it, you know, that's sort of the meaning of life you know you're hungry you eat food it satisfies you only satisfies you temporarily but if you were permanently satisfied by the food that you ate then there'd be no more experience to be had same deal you know you you wouldn't be hungry again and you wouldn't get to enjoy food for waiting around again you know if you wanted to accomplish the same idea you know accomplishing goals you have a goal in mind you work you work you accomplish it well when you accomplish that goal you get you know reward because it was an experience accomplishing the goal and you finally did it and you proved to yourself that you know you can do something or whatever but if that was the only goal then you know that would be it there would be nothing else to do you know you gotta have new goals once you fulfill your old goals and you know it's it, it doesn't mean that you're in a constant state of dissatisfaction, because you're never going to be 100% satisfied for that reason. But if you were ever 100% satisfied again, there'd be no point to existence. So, yeah, I think it's it's more about, you know, wanting it and then getting it. Sometimes in life it's about wanting it and not getting it. And those are the things that make life not worth living. Disappointment. And, uh, you know finding that you can't come up to your expectations. Now, that's the time when life doesn't go so well. None of us like that. None of us like it when, when we don't, uh, when our expectations aren't eventually met. At least to frustration, depression, and disappointment. But, uh, but you know, those times that we want something and we get it, well, that's that's why we live this life, as far as I'm concerned. And, uh, you know, I personally don't desire to return to the source, at least not consciously. You know, maybe it's a wonderful experience, but I don't see how you could call it a wonderful experience returning to the source if, if uh, you know, I mean, maybe if this experience that I'm living now is really so bad compared to that that it seems wonderful, then I guess that's how I could think of it as being wonderful, but I don't know, see any other way that you could consider nothing happening at the source wonderful and I know there was something else I was going to say about this whole thing oh well I guess that's it so yeah sure maybe we're all one but uh, I just don't give a shit